So trust me when I say this that I'm not trying to intentionally pick on anybody in anything that I do. Um, I feel that one of my roles, at least a self-appointed um, responsibility being an ambassador for Frisbee, is making sure that information that is out there in the public is correct. And what I'm referring to is um, a few weeks ago there was a post on Brody Smith's Facebook page about, it was supposed to be about Walter Morrison, um, or you could look at it the other way that it was about Ed Hedrick, but basically his post said um, the inventor of the Frisbee died and his ashes were put into, into a Frisbee. Well, that is true about Walter Morrison and about Ed Hedrick. Okay, so when they both passed away, their ashes were put into Frisbees. However, Walter Morrison's Frisbees weren't sold to the general public. They were given to his family. Ed Hedrick, you could buy a limited edition um, golf disc with his ashes in it. But there's two issues here. So one is that the post that Brody put up, when he's saying the inventor of the Frisbee, well, that's Walter Morrison, um, Fred Morrison. And the other one is that it was a picture of Ed Hedrick. So that doesn't really match up. Um, you know, Ed Hedrick helped shape the current Frisbee or golf disc or disc, but he didn't invent the Frisbee. That was Fred Morrison. Um, and then obviously the other issue is that the picture that went up. So one of the things that happened is there was a ton of comments about it. Um, Brody has a lot of kids on his Facebook page that believe everything he says. Brody has 124,000 something fans on his Facebook page. So when he speaks, people listen. So it would almost be like, you know, and this is, they're not the same person obviously, but in the world of Frisbee, you could say Brody Smith is like the LeBron James in the world of basketball. So if LeBron James said something about the history of basketball that wasn't actually entirely true, everyone's going to believe him because he's LeBron James. Okay, so when Brody says something on Facebook, everyone's going to believe him because he's Brody Smith. Okay, um, so obviously that's a big issue. And then there was also some comments. People were saying, "Well, Ed Hedrick invented disc golf." No, <laughs> Ed Hedrick did not invent disc golf. Okay, um, how do I know this? Because I actually talked to Jim Palmieri, who is a frisbee historian, who was one of the, and he even admits he did not invent disc golf, but Jim Palmieri, if it wasn't for him, disc golf would not be what it is today. Um, I posted a video a couple weeks ago, um, got to sit down with Jim Palmieri at a Frisbee tournament in Virginia, and Jim told me the history of Frisbee, and he also told me the history of disc golf. So disc golf, Frisbee golf, it was Frisbee golf, got switched over to disc golf, but that history is very tightly tied in with ultimate uh, dog disc guts, all of these other disc sports. So we can't just look at a disc sport and say ultimate Frisbee was invented and then went on. Okay, Whammo had the original Frisbee, they still make some amazing Frisbees. This is a fastback. Okay, this mold's been around for over 30 years and it's a great Frisbee. So when we talk about Whammo or bad Frisbees, you could argue that the Whammo Ultimate Disc is not a good Frisbee. Okay, but the Whammo Fastback is a fantastic Frisbee to throw. Um, but there's just all this information that's floating around. You know, we are generally a new sport in a lot of uh, a lot of ways compared to a lot of other sports and a lot of other things in history. So it's very important that the history that gets told, especially by the people who are sort of at the top of the sport or people who look up to them, give the right information. Okay, so my goal, since I, I learned all about this stuff, um, and it's only been three years, when I met Jim Palmieri, uh, I met Dan Roddick, uh, John Kirkland, so some of the early influencers in the sport, Dan Roddick, you know, some people, if you call Ed Hedrick the father of disc golf, you can call Dan Roddick the godfather of Frisbee. He's had his hands in a lot of things, just an amazing person, and I've posted videos with him. But I'm not the one telling these stories, it's from their mouths directly. So when Brody's going and posting things that aren't correct, those kids are now going telling somebody else, oh, you know, Ed Hedrick invented the Frisbee, or Ed Hedrick invented disc golf. Well, he didn't, okay? So we look at basketball, and we can say James Naismith invented basketball. That's the generally accepted version of history. Well, we need to figure that out, I think, in a better way. Jim Palmieri is coming out with a book that's going through the history of it. But all of these facts are not something that is new, okay? They're online. Fred Morrison, inventor of the Frisbee, you could say. 
you know, we've been throwing different types of frisbee looking shapes for a long time, ice cream lids, pie plates, things like that. But if it wasn't for Fred Morrison developing the Pluto platter, getting the plastic, right, instead of just throwing metal or cardboard, getting the plastic, who knows where we'd be. Okay, if it wasn't Fred Hedrick getting involved with Whammo and later founding the PDGA and the International Frisbee Association, where would we be? Okay, that certainly influenced Ultimate Frisbee, disc golf, dog disc, all these other disc sports. So when we look at it on a whole, we can't just say that Ultimate exists in one silo. And what we have today is something that didn't exist before. Okay, Ultimate is changing and evolving and moving, but the roots was everything was together, okay? Back in the late 70s and early 80s, the World Frisbee Championships and the Rose Bowl, it was everything, ultimate, dog disc, disc golf, distance, self-caught flight, accuracy, freestyle. They were all together, okay? And then it started fracturing and people started, you know, only doing one sport. So you have people like Avery Jenkins and Simon Lazad and um, David Wiggins Jr. and, you know, Paul Macbeth, the best disc golfers in the world who only play disc golf because that's their profession. Okay, you have other people who only play Ultimate Frisbee because whether they practice or play, they're playing three to four or five days a week. Um, that's all they have time for. Okay, then you have people like me who are doing as much as I can of everything. Okay, I don't play as much Ultimate as I used to, but certainly play a lot of disc golf, do a lot of dog disc, and do overall. Okay, overall is seven different disc sports. So the whole point of this is because we are a small community, because we haven't been around for that long, the information that's put out there, especially by the people at the top of the sport, needs to be accurate. Okay? I've posted videos, interviews with the people at the beginning of the sport who have all this information. So it's nothing new. We just need to get our facts straight. That's the biggest thing is getting our facts straight. Okay? Um, anyway, that was just uh, something on this Sunday that I wanted to share with you. And I uh, hope you're all having a great day.